Grant from the Strength Co. And today we're gonna to talk all things plates. It's been about a year since we, our plates hit the market and started landing in homes. Uh, we've shipped to every single state in the US, multiple countries and multiple continents. Uh, we started the design phase of this in April or so of 2020. Uh, first plates hit the streets in August of 2020. And here we are in September of 2021, um, having had the plates on the market for a while and shipping them from all over to all over. Um, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the durability and how they've held up. Obviously I'm biased, uh, I happen to own the company, but if you wanna take a look, go to our reviews. Um, on the website, you'll see over 300 five-star reviews. Read about the plates, see people's photos for yourself. Subscribe to our YouTube right here. We have older videos from a year ago of when the plates were first coming out that people have commented on and talked about how it went. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go over today the evolution of our plate and then how it's tested so far. So we're gonna start by going back to the 1960s on an old school York 45. Okay, so this is an old school York 45. This is what everyone gets excited about on the internet that they talk about in blog posts. Uh, it does have some great features, and this is what came to mind when designing our strength coat plates. Um, this plate is very thin. That's probably my favorite feature of this plate. It's just under 1.25 inches. Mass stays close to the lifter. You can get lots of bar, uh, plates on the bar. Uh, that's the best feature of this plate. The back is milled. It's a milled back, which everyone gets really excited about. Can you believe it? It's milled. Look, it has scratches. Um, I'm not a fan of milled backs because this is what it looks like after time, but we'll talk about that later. Um, and then the lip on it. It has a lip and the lip's rather deep. The problem with this lip is it's curved. So when you go to put your fingers in the lip, they, they wanna come up to the edge and they wanna come out. Uh, so I didn't like that per se, but this is what Rip has in his gyms. Rip helped me a lot when we were designing the plates. Uh, it's, an, it's the old school York. It was made in Pennsylvania before they moved it to Canada and then eventually uh, China. I don't know what they're doing now, but that's old school York. So when I opened my barbell gyms in 2017, this is what I went after. I literally went to York's website they no longer made this plate, and now I'll show you what I found on York circa 2017. Okay, so this is a York machined 45. When I opened my first gym, uh, I actually did not get this plate. I got a York deep dish plate uh, that I don't think they make anymore. I ordered them, and they were all an inch too short, uh, so everyone was pulling further than they needed to and we were having a trouble setting up their mechanics. I, I, I measured it and I figured that out. I sold them all online and I upgraded to this for my 45s. This is a York machined 45, 2% tolerance, uh, pretty thin plate and this has been in my gyms, uh, both gyms ever since and it gets high amount of use. We'll talk about durability and stuff in a second. Um, what I liked about this compared to the old York was that the lip on it is very deep. And having handled these in my gyms for five years when we went to design plates, I really liked uh, the lip of this 45. The only thing I really didn't like about this plate was one, the finish, which we'll chat about, and two, I wished it was thinner because this old York was thinner, so I knew it was possible, but I wished that the plate was a little bit thinner, although this is not bad. Uh, but this is what I operated within my gyms until I've now upgraded one of them to our new plates, as you can see behind me, and the other one we're gonna do very soon. So the Strength Co plate was meant to be a design or a mesh of these two plates. Accurate, thin, made in USA, um, et cetera. And so let's talk about the evolution of, of sample number one of the Strength Co 45 to where we are now. Okay, so this is sample number one, the first Strength Co 45 made. Um, and we learned a lot from this plate. This was the original design. Now. There was a couple major changes to this, to where we ended up being. When we made it, we liked a few things. 1.25 inches thick, we liked the thinness, and I think it even says on here it does, 45.30 pounds. So we were right on, on the money uh, for the plate itself. What I didn't like was the lip face height. So when you're talking about the lip of a plate, you have lip depth, that's how many fingers I can jam in here, or how far I can jam my fingers in here. And then you have the lip height of the face itself. 
Aesthetically, I just thought it looked a little bit too wide. And you know, these things, you look at the prints, you design the tooling, you go there, you think you know what it's gonna look like, but until the product's in hand, you just don't know. So I thought this was too wide and thought I wanna shrink that down. I wish I didn't think that because it was very costly in the neighborhood of about $20,000 to redo that tooling, but I thought in the long run, it was going to be worth doing. So we made the face shorter, which I'll show you in a little bit, and then we also added a couple other things. We added a chamfer to the, to the corners of the plates uh, so that when you're grabbing it, there's no sharp edges. And besides that, we really liked everything about it. To fix the lip, basically on the tooling, the tooling is, or pattern it's called, is the thing that makes the void in the mold for the iron to pour into. So there's physical things called tooling that do that. Um, we had to shave this down and then we had to bring up the web index a little bit. We used to be even more than an inch of, uh, of lip depth here, and now we're right at an inch. So that's what we changed um, on this plate. Now let's talk finish, because that was the biggest part. We, we changed the design up, and then we decide, had to decide what we wanted the finish to be. Uh, you saw the old York 45, rusted, patinaed, blue, as they say. Uh, I didn't like that. I had now been making and selling squat racks for you know a few, a few months, four or five months at this point, you know, had sold hundreds of them, and we started those with bare steel. And at first I said, hey, you know, light coating of oil, brush it once in a while. Customer service wise, I didn't like doing it, dealing with it. The ones I had in my garage, I didn't like dealing with it. And I said, you know, powder coat that. So when it came to plates, I wasn't a fan of the raw iron. I, I talked to Rip about it. Rip really wanted me to go raw iron. He thought it was the best plate. Um, I wasn't interested. So this is how this is held up in a year. This is in my garage in Southern California. I looked in my garage about once a week. Usually I'm here in the gym. So you can see in all the high usage areas where my hands are on it, taking it on and off the bar, rust is forming. Um, I, I, I wouldn't know this now until I had the plates for a year. Very happy we didn't go raw iron. Now what I did like, and when this plate was fresh out of machining, this edge was so shiny, I loved that. Uh, I liked the silver iron look. I thought it was really cool. So when I was going to the drawing board and you know talking to the suppliers on coatings, I said, I want it to look like iron. So we took another one of the original samples and we clear coated it. And when we clear coated this thing, I got very excited. It came to me and it was absolutely pristine. I liked the color. I liked that it looked, you know, like a, a raw iron. There's a little bit maybe of a green or a gray tint to it, but I just thought it looked really cool. Um, then I deadlifted with it. I put them on the bar and I started using it and the clear coat started peeling. Um, you can see the back here where it's wearing. This is from use in my garage where the other plates have gone up against it. Uh, and I just wasn't a huge fan and I knew it was something that I didn't want to deal with. Because anytime anything shows up that's not perfect, you know, we get complaints and I understand that, we'll address that in a little bit, but the clear coat I didn't think had the durability we wanted. The goal was to make a plate that you buy once and own your whole life and then your grandkids will own them. And I didn't feel like this coating did that for us. So clear coat went out the window and that's where we eventually went over to our eco. So, Raw iron, wasn't a fan. Clear coat, wasn't a fan. Now I had an option to go back to what had been done to my Yorks. That's called a wet paint finish. Uh, those old, the York machine ones that were in this gym are dipped in a rust inhibitor and then a wet paint, just meaning a standard, like if you're spraying a car or something like that. It's fine, the problem with it is it wears over time. So back to this machine, York 45. It's held up just fine. The only wear this thing has is on the coating itself. So you can see when a 25's up against it, when a 10's, a five, et cetera, it wears, there's some light spots of rust in it. Um, this coating is nice. When you get it, it looks great. As you take the little gold made in China stickers off. Yes, I did that for this gym, even though it says York, Pennsylvania on the hub. Um, it looks great, but as soon as it's been worked out with a few times, this is where it is. So, didn't want wet paint, didn't want clear coat, didn't want raw iron. I wanted E-coat, and that's what we got. E-coat, electro coat. Um, I've been to the facility, I've watched this process happen, I didn't understand it for a long time, but plates go through a double alkaline wash. 
uh, that include a rust in inhibitor. So picture a big conveyor belt with hooks, all the plates hanging. They go into the first bath, then they go into the second bath, then they go into the electrocoating bath. And they go in, they get completely submerged. Again, subscribe to our YouTube. I posted this on, on this before. Uh, they come out and they get baked not once, but twice. Uh, while they're in the electrocoat um, bath, there's a current that's applied, which is causing the adhesion and it's why it's so powerful. So overall, the E-coat, we love it. We think it's great. It's durable. It's good. We're looking at other color options. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's talk about how the plates held up itself. Uh, we talk of, we say all the time, and it's all over the website, inner diameter on these plates is 1.99 inches. It's, it's tighter than most. A standard barbell sleeve is 1.95 inches if it's the manufacturer is doing anything right. Most plates are done at about 2.03 to 2.05. And so that's why you have that slop when you're deadlifting, when you're putting it on and off the bar, et cetera. I wanted a tighter finish. I wanted it as a barbell lifter. It was something that I never liked with plates, how they, they rattle and they slide. I didn't want to have to use collars all the time. Uh, I liked it particularly on the deadlift, so that's why we went with the tighter uh, finish. So let's talk where though, and let's talk that center hub. Remember, when this thing gets electrocoated, there's a big hook in here that's carrying it through the, the baths and the heater and the, and the baker and the oven and all that stuff. So when it comes out, there's often a little mark on the inner hub. Now, we hit it at the facility with a little touch up, but sometimes you'll see a little scuff and some of you send us photos. That's normal, it's gonna happen. There's no other way to do this. You'll be okay, I promise. But what also will happen is as this plate wears a bit, the E-coat on the sleeve itself or on the in inner diameter will wear some. And if you look here, you can see, hey, there's where the E-coat's off. There's definitely some wear. It's actually kind of a feature because uh, the plate uh, makes less noise once that wears down a little bit. It goes on a little bit easier. Uh, it's fine and it, it is a barbell plate. It is going to be used. Other stuff, remember, this is a commercial gym. We have. 50, 60 people come through every day. They're deadlifting, you know, heavy, squatting, they're dropping plates. Uh, it's a gym, right? Gym's different than your garage. If you wanna go out into your garage and your bedroom slippers and your white gloves while you lift weights, go for it. When we train at a gym, plates get used. Not abused, they get used. So somewhere will be there. You can see, you know, on the edges here, the machine surface is still shiny, still kind of gives that high gloss feel, but you'll see some nicks here and there that happen. This is just the nature of plates. E-code is not perfect, it will wear some. You can see a little bit here. Um, so it, it's wearing, it's not wearing near like this, and we're a year in, and, and overall, uh, it's, it's looking pretty great. Okay, so also you can notice the difference on here, and I'll show you between these two faces. So this is the final version that we ended up with. So you can see that this is thinner than this one over here, or, or, or not as tall. And aesthetically, I'll let you be the judge, uh, I just think this one looks a lot better. So glad we made that change. Now, let's talk any changes to this plate or anything about this plate that went into the design of our 100. Our 100 just came out. Uh, we've just started shipping them in the last few weeks. Really like the way those looked. We obviously wanted the same lip, but we did think it would be a good idea to open up this inner diameter. And so we did from 1.99 inches to 2.01 inches. That was after we got the samples and tried it. So if you're getting some early orders, you might have a pair with the 1.99, but we opened that up to 2.01 just because the plate's so heavy when you're putting it on stuff so that it doesn't uh, it's a little bit easier to, to maneuver. Okay, so we won't go into too much detail on the 25s and below, but we'll talk about a couple features of them. The 25, very similar to the 45, same uh, lip height, same overall thickness of the plate, dead on the money, love the 25. 10s, 5s, 2.5s, and the new ones, the 1.25s, we, we had to really do some stuff with this. One, I wanted to keep the spokes as long as I could on the design. I thought the spoke gave it the classic look. A lot of folks at, at 25, or but definitely at the 10, they, the plates start to look completely different. I wanted the set to match. So we kept the, t the spokes down to the 10s, and the feature of the 10, or one of the features, was the thinness as well. This is under an inch, it's at point, uh, 0 0.88 inches wide, and the reason I wanted that to happen for you dumbbell guys, right? This loadable dumbbell, this one's ours, can fit six Strength Code 10s on either side. So 
120 plus the weight of this, it, it, it goes pretty quick. Uh, so we wanted that feature from the tens. Fives, two and a half, 1.25s, had to get rid of the spokes. Just there's not as much room. It's a smaller item, etc. They all are all very thin, all very accurate. The wear on these has been great, uh, or lack thereof, I should say. The 1.25 just came out with it. I am a starting strength coach, so I deal with microloading all the time. You guys know we're crazy about it, going up a little bit at a time each, each workout. I personally have never seen a 1.25 that I liked more, and obviously these are my plates. I designed them, but it, it feels, it looks like, like a plate. It's not a 45, but it has the same level. You'll know the second that you get them in your hands. Big fan of the 1.25. So those are the change plates. Let's talk features of the 100. Okay, last but not least, the Hundo. Just released, just started shipping. I really love this plate. I like it because it says 100. It's like the $100 bill. It just looks better than all of the other ones. I wish there was a $1,000 bill. No plans for a thousand pound plate, but the 100 turned out pretty sweet. Diameter, same as the 45, uh, obviously. Inner diameter is wider, as I mentioned before, so you can get it on the bar a little bit. This one's not, this is actually our sample. Um, and obviously it's a much thicker plate, not much thicker, it's, it's just over twice the thickness um, because it's, it's so heavy. In terms of handling it, you will wanna follow Rip's guidelines of eight fingers and two thumbs because it is heavy, but you can still manage it just fine pulling it off the rack. That's why this goes in letters out. Uh, of note, you know, how maneuverable is it? It's 100 pounds. It's not easy, but you can move it around. My 65-year-old dad does this with it and just stands up. So if you got some strength, it's just fine. But we'll pick it up and come over here to load it and then show you some more features. So boom, the 45's on there. I'll pull it out a little so you can see more. Um, excuse me, the 100. There it is. Not much more to say about this. Same features that we went in detail on the 45. Thicker, obviously, uh, but turned out really nice. Hope you need some for your gym because you're that strong. So that's it. That's the evolution from the old York to the current 45, the whole line from 1.25 to the 100. Future plans, you guys ask all the time. Biggest thing we've been focused on is getting shipping cheaper. We now ship out of Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and California. So shipping rates are lower than they've ever been. Um, changes to plates. We're playing with one thing right now, which would be some color variants. This is an OD green one. Uh, Coop at Garage Gym Reviews asked me, why did you do it in OD green, the closest color to black? Well, he's not in manufacturing, and when a color's already running and you want to do a sample, it's the most affordable way to do it. So this is what's called a wet paint with a soft grip applied. This, if you feel this plate, it has like a slight rubber feeling to it by design um, that makes it softer and a little bit quieter. And we wanted to test and see if this wet paint with the soft grip would work. I'm not a huge fan. It's got some markings, you know, it, this has hardly even been used and, and, it's, and it's wearing up a little bit. So we're not gonna go with the wet paint rubber grip, but I do wanna know if you're interested in color, uh, what colors, we're exploring a couple things right now. So. After you subscribe, leave a comment about color. And then everyone still asks us all the time, are we gonna make a 35? That, prove to us it's worth it. Comment below if you want one or don't want one. I like to think I'm a man of standards. Um, I still find the 35, you know what? Maybe it's starting to grow on me, you never know. So uh, we'll get back to you on that one.